Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We will be kicking off in just a few minutes. We're just waiting for a few more people to join. Uh, we have quite a lot of people uh, registered today to hear this very unusual data intelligence webinar. Um, most of you will be in mute except the presenters. Um, so if you have a question, uh, please post that whenever you're ready in the questions area or obviously uh, click raise a hand and we'll go to, to go to you there. Um, so my name is Robert Ward. I'm Head of Business Development at Economic Change. I'm very pleased to welcome a very important guest, uh, Joe Haffenden, who's the Impact and Evaluation Manager at the MS Society. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the MS Society, but probably like me, I don't know a huge lot about it. So I'm going to hand over to Jo, not only to introduce you to her, but she is going to give us some more details about MS Society's work. So welcome, Jo. Welcome to the webinar. And welcome to Economic Change again, as you're one of our customers. And uh, basically, tell us more about the MS Society. Hi, everyone. Uh Thanks, Robert. Um, yes, so I'm Jo Huffenden. I'm the Impact and Evaluation Manager for the MS Society. Um, and I just thought uh, whether we could just uh, kick off uh, with an introduction about the MS Society. So um, the MS stands for multiple sclerosis, which is a condition that affects your brain and your spinal cord. And in MS, the quoting of the of, that protects the nerves and the melanin is damaged. And this causes a range of symptoms like blurred vision and problems with how you move, think and feel. So the MS Society is a charity that um, started to operate in the 1950s and we operate in the whole UK. So we have offices in Scotland, Northern Ireland, England and Wales. And our vision is a world free of defects of MS. And in order to achieve our vision and most of our work we do, amongst the work we do, we also offer a variety of services to help people affected by MS. And it's in this context, I'm going to share with you all about impact management through the development and adoption of Salesforce. When, um, so when you develop a system, to aid you to manage your organization and services. This system is a representation of your business model. So that's why it's, I'm going to explain firstly about the service delivery model and secondly, its aims and thirdly, within that, how we measure impact. Um, so I'm gonna take you through um, one of the projects where we adopted Salesforce. Um, so about the service delivery model, we developed Salesforce for a service called Active Together. And within the service aims to encourage people with MS to become more physically active or to sustain levels of physical activity. So within that, we provide the we provided a service remotely, remotely, so it means that we use the helpline to provide the service. So it wasn't a face-to-face. -face. And so people registered to the service via our main website and internally through the helpline. And then our physical activity specialists developed individual action plans. People have then the opportunity to set up their own goals and activities. And this is rem it's a, because it's a remote service. We use also motivational interviewing and it's a person centered approach for people to set up their own goals and activities. This should help us and should help the participants to adopt sustainable behavior change around physical activity. Um, this all gets recorded in Salesforce. It's important here to say that this service is to be provided within people that it's based in, in England. 
So the second um, strand I wanted to touch on, it's about the aims of the service. So as I was sharing earlier on, the service is about increasing and maintaining the levels of physical activity. This means that we have to measure this. We ask participants to report to us how much physical activity they did within the last week. Similarly, we also wanted to know the impact of physical activity in both emotional well-being as well as individuals' well development. Um, and on the one hand, um, we know because the evidence suggests that people who does exercise tends to report healthier levels of emotional well-being. So we wanted to capture that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, and also on the other hand, um, our service delivery model is built on person as a person-centered person approach. So we wanted to know about the service impact on the individual development of the participants. Right. For example, developing their knowledge skills and confidence and setting up their own goals and having the opportunities to practice these new skills. So we hope that this is going to lead to a sustained behavior chain around physical activity, long lasting change. So for this, we then uh, measure and capture um, data at four different points. And when obviously when participants arrive, which is when it, before they access the service, and this then becomes the data we use as a baseline. Then we capture data at three, six, 12 months later to measure the impact, the distance travel by the participants. And, and um, this again, this gets recorded to, you know, in, in Salesforce. And this leads me also to my last component, impact. In addition to what we also, we, we also collect data to help us managing the, rela managing the relationship with the participants and the benefit or the beneficiaries. And for example, we collect data on whether the participant is a wheelchair user, um, and this data is then used to shape the intervention. This is, this is very important. And we also collect data around the DV individual action plans that the physical activity specialists develop on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. After all, it's because it's a, a participant focused service, so you need to make sure that you record this in your database. Um, and it's important to have this information with you to be able to deliver a high quality service to manage the relationship with your customers successfully because you don't want to have someone who rings your service and the physical activity specialist know, know their names or their conditions or because this can all enhance Good the results yeah. exactly of, of what yeah. you ultimately achieve. And we also collect data on demographics such as ethnicity or mm -hmm. type of MS, length since diagnosis, comorbidity, because some of the some of these data need to be considered to shape the intervention at the individual need based on the individual needs and perhaps to help us to flag levels of vulnerability. Sure, that's good, so, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely, and also because this is a pilot service, I knew that we needed to have robust data, evidence to be able to understand whether the service works and whether it doesn't work, and if so, what are these active components, right? So it would just help you to draw out at some point when it comes to the whole whole evaluation of the service to understand what you want to replicate and where you want to scale up and what will be the conditions and the environment you need to create for some groups or what sort of how you need to shape the provision of the service to meet the needs of the different groups mm -hmm. and again all of this is captured in Salesforce. So well Salesforce, done. Well done. This is yeah. Really, because as you're going to say, it's flexible. So updating Salesforce, keeping this type of data is doing amazing things, obviously, for your organization. 
because you're you're as such doing research, you're monitoring, you're sharing that information sort of scientifically, so it can maybe help a wider group. So that's fantastic. It's really a great way of showing that, you know, just by capturing data in your system in a very easy way, you can measure your impact so much more effectively. So great job. Yes. Um, and I think often what happens is that people don't realize that um, in order to develop a database, you need to be very clear of your service aims, what you want to achieve, and then what data is going to underpin, underpin yes. this, this achievement. And yeah. all that what is ultimately is going to be the base of the configuration, the customization of your database. In this case, it's Salesforce. And, and from, my, drawn from my experience, um, it's a variable. I have quite a lot of like more than 15 years experience. So I have seen quite a lot of databases. And the advantage with Salesforce is that it's so flexible and yeah. that you can make sure, although you can make sure that it meets the business requirements. So we know that business requirements changes, you know, the groups you work with, they, they change. Hence, mm -hmm. you need to expect that as we develop and society moves on, systems would need to kind of keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Salesforce allowed you to do. Yeah, good. That's phenomenal, it's very true. It's very easy to create custom fields in, in a CRM system such as Salesforce to monitor. Obviously, you have to sit down first, and this is normally where we help customers, and define your business process. Because unless the CRM reflects your business process, business needs, your monitoring, your, you know, the path of the customer, so to speak, on their journey to recovery or better health, um, then it's very easy to lose that data. You know, you can have a meeting with a customer and not record their progress. If somehow you can record that type of progress in a system that you can monitor, you can see where they were last month as opposed to this month, then that's phenomenal and obviously will help you through data, through capturing that data um, to, you know, basically fulfill the mission and goal of your charity. So this is very important. So we will say that strategy, turn your vision into a robust plan and have streamlined processes. Define your performance indicators and undertake real-time analysis. Use something like Salesforce CRM to achieve a bigger data analysis and personal engagement strategies. Now, again, everyone thinks, you know, Salesforce is a big organization. Obviously, on the charity side, salesforce.org, we deal with all sorts of charities. MS is a large charity. We have a whole mixture of customers, some very, very small, just two or three users who are still using Salesforce to data analyze, to look at their impact, and obviously to help with change management and guide your team through not only the implementation, but all the changes come uh, when you consolidate your business process in a CRM system so that you can do all this wonderful monitoring. So we've yeah, got some, so, would um, you like to comment? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was just going to say, you are absolutely right. And also to be able to gather all your requirements, you need to make sure that you use principles of such like collaboration. So where you are then able to gather from all the different teams and the people are going to be involved in the project, delivering the project, because they all will contribute an additional yes, insight. That's a very good point. Um, so yes, it's key and it's also key in order for this to work, to work with your teams. To understand what are the processes underlying this delivery. Mm -hmm. That's very good because sometimes you know when we start collaborating with a client or tell, tell me your business process 
you know, tell me your pain points, let's see if we can resolve those. Sometimes you need to throw out a really wide net. You want to capture everything possible and then keep looking at it, refining it. Do we need this? No, we don't want to make this an industry. We want to keep focused on, on what we need, how do we measure that impact? And as you see on the screen, there's some ideas here of you know, the things that you need to look at, which this obviously will be shared with you afterwards, you know, improve stakeholder engagement. So it's everyone involved in the process. You can use online surveys. You can use some of the tools within Salesforce, like Chatter and Communities, to actually go out to your constituents, to your patients, and, and basically talk to them. So really what we want from this is improved business intelligence. Behind Salesforce CRM, you also have machine learning, or what's called artificial intelligence, which is branded in Salesforce as Einstein Analytics. Here you can use other metrics to measure and predict. So you could say, in your case, Joe, adding Einstein as the next stage in your development, depending on all the factors that you brought in about the patient, you could then have what is the propensity to get to the next stage? What percentages of that? In other words, if everyone's doing their exercises, if everyone's doing everything that you've told, the score would probably be good. It might say this person is just 80% away from achieving the goal that you had originally set. And what's really helpful about this type of analytics is it's happening in the background. You set it up once, you set the parameters. And then you can look at your whole patient list and see who is failing and perhaps reach out and give them additional support. So that's so important and so, so very helpful. So there are just a few points. Joe, I'd like to go back to asking you some questions. Obviously, you know, you've been on this, you, you've done it, you're working on it. So you've mentioned some of this, but what did you want to see from your data that you couldn't before? I mean, before you had Salesforce, what did you do? Uh, was it measured somewhere else in spreadsheets or? Um, yeah, so, um, well, it's a, it's a new project. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have the opportunity to start from scratch. From fresh, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> which, which, is, which is great because it means that all the learnings, all the experiences you have gathered from other projects, they came into play here and then you had the opportunity to use all these learnings. Wow. Um, so, so when um, we, we created a, a dashboard that could tell a story and inform the team and the organization what was happening in the service, and perhaps that wasn't available for others, for other mm -hmm. services. And, and there were two main reasons for this. So we wanted to be able to provide a high level, an overview of what is happening in the service, and, and on the other hand, link to this, where the project is delivering against its targets, where yeah. the project is on track. Okay. So we develop a dashboard under the principles of prioritization of what we measure, mm -hmm. and similarly under the principle of which data needed to be usable and actionable, mm -hmm. so that the service is an insight-led service. Yeah, okay. That's perfect, that's really good. I'm just gonna share, I'm just gonna um, go out of my screen. I'm just gonna share a dashboard, a typical dashboard. Um, I won't do the one I'm funding, but for instance, I'll give you an idea here of a dashboard. Um, so we've taken the data that lives in Salesforce that we've gathered. This one is the silent claims by country. So total number of asylum claims, 1.3 million. Now we've split this over various countries to see, and also I get the ability to hover. I can see the figures here anyway. Um, it's given me a map to show immediately where this is happening. You know, what, what are the main points? So obviously Germany, as we know, has taken many uh, refugees and, and asylums. So we can see the countries 
primarily Sweden and Germany, which we know as a fact have taken in. But perhaps we want to drill down. Uh, we want to see then the homelessness of these various people over the, in these various countries. And we want to look down and drill down into more data to basically see the number of claims per country, et cetera, uh, percentage homeless going on. And we can see this in many different ways. So this is giving us, for this instance, a top level view or something, and also adding geographical data if you need that. Um, you can visualize this in, in so many different ways. I mean, this is one on funding. So many, many charities, obviously a big function is fundraising. So that's, again, very important. This obviously is a big organization. It has 167 million. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, funding, whether you're a small charity or a large charity, is equal in the sense that if you deliver your service, deliver your program, you need funds. But we can analyze this and we can see what's happened over the last years. We can see government funding versus our own funding, funding by government sources, uh, homes sold, an average funding home, etc. So we can break down this information and get a top level view. If you're basically trying to do this in a spreadsheet, major hard work. Um, so visualizing that data is so, so important and really helps you keep very much on target, allows you to fulfill the things you need, essentially. Yes, Jo? Yes. Um, yeah, so for the project, we had just very similar to, to what you were just sharing with us. We mm -hmm. have um, a dashboard where you can see how many people have signed or have you know signed to the service, um, and you can see a split of these users by region and where they are in the in, in England. Yes. Um, or outside in England, because actually that's one of the criteria for us to provide the service. They need to be based in England. And yeah. you can similarly see what channel they were referred through. So you could see whether they came from the helpline or the website. And so all these different elements and, and help you to act and decide, oh, well, if you are not getting enough people through your website, what is happening or enough people to achieve your targets through the helpline, does that mean that you need to talk to your team and maybe try to um, prioritize the referrals to the service? And you're yeah. similarly on our dashboard, you can see whether people are inactive or physically active because that's another criteria for you to access the service. Yeah. So, um, so yes, that's how the, we use dashboards. Good. Um, can I just refer, I just want to go to um, a few people asked a few questions. They say, so are you pulling the data from outside of specific Salesforce instance? So uh, in this case, no, for this demo, this, this information is within Salesforce, but you can, using uh, the analytics tools within Salesforce, compare your data with outside data that you can bring into the system. As long as it's in a spreadsheet, you can basically marry those two together and put them on a dashboard for analysis purposes. Um, some people said they can't see the slides. Please put your hand up or, or put a question if you can't see the slides. Um, you should be seeing them. It could be your internet connection, but just a couple of people said that, so I do apologize. So yes, data can be brought into Salesforce um, very, very easily for analysis purposes. If it doesn't live in Salesforce and you want to, for instance, you're doing a mosaic, you're looking at your marketing, and you want to see the mosaic value of, of customers, which is like a grading, social grading, you could pull all your customers from Salesforce into a, into a dashboard, pull that information exteriorly from a mosaic list and compare them. So you'll really then see, you know, your demographia at a much clearer level. Um, how did you manage your data before? Oops, how did you manage your data before and obviously now we know it's in Salesforce. So was it much harder to manage before Salesforce, your data? 
Um, yeah, so um, it's, it is a new service. So for the MS Society, it's an opportunity to pilot, which means it's an opportunity to learn about the adoption of a system that provides a case management functionality. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are only using it um, for this project, so we are gathering learnings. And, and for other projects with similar case management requirements, alternative systems were used. Yeah. They were clunky and not fit for purpose. And from the building development perspective, they they took and they, they are you know they they were time consuming to yes. to be developed because they were not fit for purpose. We were just stretching all these things. And yeah. from the user perspective, Rob, perhaps not very they they were not very user friendly nor nor intuitive to use. And, and as well as difficult to 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 see so at, at a glance with the click of a button, you know. Exactly. To so this monitor is where the project was. Absolutely. So around yeah. impact management and perhaps where you will, where you have to then focus your resources as opposed to only rely on summative da data, mm -hmm. which will only be gathered and crunch for the funder reports, which is probably sure. too late. Yeah, exactly. So yes, from, from the data management perspective, Salesforce is easy and significantly more intuitively. Yeah. Intuitive and, and, that, and, to, and that's to what we want. More. We want yeah. one source of truth. Um, you know, we have many customers come to us, they've got data in different silos and spreadsheets and, and old day legacy systems and pulling that all together and having one source of truth saves time it creates efficiency um, you know you're not duplicating effort um, because obviously there's deduping automatically set up in the system to help you so these are some of the benefits of obviously managing your data within a CRM system um, so you've said this, really you've answered this for us very early on, um, that you put your data into dashboards. So again, this means this one source of truth, that dashboard is the ones I've shown you, is uh, live data. So you can do analytic, you know, charts, etc., based on what happened last month, this week, last year. And the great thing in, in Salesforce is it makes it very easy because you can use, in a report, you can actually show, show me all my donors last month, last 60 days, last week, uh, yesterday, and you can use those as just type this year, and, and it will work it out for you, or you can put, put specific dates. So what, what we basically want to do on, on a dashboard, and I'm just going to go back to flip to another dashboard now as we're, as we're, we're talking about that. Um, here's sort of a donation dashboard that has a number of different charts. Um, so here basically you're seeing average donation per year over calendar year, uh, donation sums per year, et cetera. Donations by the 25 household gifts. So you can immediately see who are your big donors. You can visualize all this information. So this is obviously taking us back 2016, 17, 18. Um, so we can see that we've grown our donations. So the average donations per household has gone up from 2016 to four, four, 450 pounds to 499, so we're obviously doing something right. Um, so again, the most important thing is to be able to visualize your data. It's only when we can actually visualize our data that we can have this overview over the top um, and therefore make better decisions for our organization, for our patients, for our donors, for our stakeholders, it's so important. So really, in summary, what would you say that data has done for your organization? It's obviously, from what you've told us, done amazing things. I mean, MS is, is something that's affecting more and more people today. I even have it in my family. Um, so, um, you know, I know the disabilities that this can bring for people 
And it's so great that you're doing this to really, you know, monitor what's going on with people and help them. So what's the main, what's the big difference? Is it that visibility? Is that what's the, you know, the overall winner of all of this effort? Um, I think it's great that, for example, you can segment your reports and then you can, for example, provide information to the relevant group, to the specific stakeholders. So is that so? That's a winner because your relationships with with different stakeholders are easier to manage, um, and also the, to provide information is relevant to them. And but ultimately, of course, Robert, it's about um, checking whether you are actually making. Uh, achieving the impact you want to achieve within the group you work for and you are investing so much time and also so much you know resources and mm -hmm. um, ultimately for us it's also about are you really creating the change you want to create and are you are one step closer at hence mm -hmm. to you know to achieve your organization's vision um, and yeah. which is our world from the effects of ms um, mm -hmm. So I think um, it's always, I think what the system like Salesforce enables you to do, it's to work on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but also without missing out and forgetting about what's the real vision and what is actually really driving and motivating you to provide the service and revisiting mm -hmm. constantly those principles. Um, so, because it's very easy that you, very easily you can get lost in, in the delivering the service, but what softwares like Salesforce and allows you to do is to take one step back and review and revisit yeah. it. I think also one point to mention here, Joe, and you probably agree on this, is that you know if you've measured the impact and you have that, and you can put that then in, in reports when you go for more funding it's so much more creditable because you've measured the impact you're showing that you're, you're creating major change and fundraisers you know grantors they're looking at that information we do get involved in this you know we work with a lot of granting organizations and they're telling us well you know if people apply from grants i want to see the nitty-gritty i want to see everything down to a fine point of what they've done so far. What is that impact? How have they delivered that impact? And what is the measurement? I want to see the measurement. Why should I give you more money if there's no measurement? So I think these things are, are very important. And ultimately, if you can um, present the evidence that your service is making or it's not, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's important to take it as a part of your learnings yes. and there is no failure um, I think as long as you have a system that is transparent and comply with some core principles there is no reason to be scared or just I think it's important to run a service in an honest way and systems like this enable you to applies these sort of principles. And when you have that transparency and you mm -hmm. have the evidence, you can also go back to other funders and say, look, we have this data, perhaps it didn't help us to achieve what we wanted or the way we wanted, but we we achieved something else. Or we or you could also say it actually well, look, we achieved what we wanted to achieve. Um maybe to approach them to add another funder to um continue the project um, exactly. at a different level. So I think mm. that also enables that huge capacity. Within our project, we also have a extern external stakeholders because mm -hmm. we do have, we externally commission the evaluation of the project. So yeah. I created some reports for the external evaluators mm -hmm. so what happens on a specific like time frames that we agreed with the evaluators 
is that on a regularly basis, we will then download the data set mm -hmm. yeah. for them for them to analyze it from the more statistical perspective. Yes. And, yeah. and then that also means that, um, so I don't pull the reports myself. The yeah the people that the you know my colleagues who are the frontline staff members they pull the reports themselves so mm -hmm. it means that um they learned about salesforce but it also meant that they are in autonomous they can pull the reports themselves they then transfer the reports who are there mm -hmm. have been you know um, are, are there available to be transferred to the um, external evaluators. These reports uh, do not have, they don't have like any identifiable data. So for example, you are not in the risk of break, you know, breaching any data protection because you, sure. the way you refer to your participants are by ID numbers. So mm -hmm. things like that, you know, it helps to really run the project mm -hmm. is so much comfortable absolutely so yeah. it's it's so you are keeping your data safe as well yeah we have a question actually from henrietta atkinson who says do you use salesforce across your organization and across all departments or is the focus just on impact management at the moment so at the moment we are only using it for for this specific project just for service delivery mm -hmm. so um we are not extending it to oh we haven't extended for now um, yeah. to for example to um use for fundraising or finance because we have other systems in place so at the moment um we are just piloting, trialing it. The MES Society is a huge organization. It's a huge yes, it's very big, isn't uh, it? And, and, so and you're, doing, you're really way. doing due yeah. diligence in the sense that sometimes if you're a very big charity, you don't want to change everything overnight. And you want to look at the core areas where change is required, adapt those, decide whether that actually works, whether the system works for you, and then begin to implement that in other areas of the business. Obviously, Salesforce is set up not only to do as, as it's been customized for you to do, but it's also great for fundraising um, corporately or essentially uh, granting, volunteering. These are all things that are built into what we call the nonprofit service pack, which sits on top of the corporate um, Salesforce and is specially aligned for nonprofits. Um, so Salesforce is, you know, multifunctional. It will do everything a charity needs. Maybe you don't need volunteering, so you just ignore that piece. Maybe you do need fundraising, and a lot of organisations have fundraising, service delivery, volunteering, granting, all sort of mixed up together, and it's all wonderfully organised etc within the system so thank you Henrietta for that for that good question excellent so it depends some people as we said um, you know roll out to a, a big if you're a very big organization that's a huge task so if you can sort of have bite-sized chunks prove whether it works for you and then move on this is it's often a very good strategy so before we before we close, there's a few other things I'd like to tell you, but please post any more questions, um, because we'd like to say what it, what sort of are your next steps um, for you as people considering perhaps Salesforce, looking at your impact management. So just here, there's a few sort of giveaways. You know, you're going to have better customer intelligence. You will have reports and dashboards. Under a dashboard sits a report, which is the collection of data. They're so easy and intuitive to pull that you don't need a lot of training. It's very intuitive and in the majority common sense. Um, you can monitor the distance that you've traveled in doing this, you know, undertaking better data analysis, reviewing your customer satisfaction. Um, Salesforce have a, a, a 
a survey tool now that's built into NPSP, so you can do that as part of your impact management as well. So that's really worth looking at if you haven't got that already. And of course, external data capture, you can bring in information from your website into Salesforce that saves you having to enter it yourself. So that sort of puts the CRM on steroids where it's doing a lot more work for you, etc. So they would really, really essentially be your next steps. So really we're sort of, we offer support and training, uh, obviously one-to-one -one consultancy support, and we have the discount, charity discount package for super moms. This kicks off in August, so you have to have signed up for our small uh, charity discount package um, by the middle of August, and that gives you uh, 48 hours pro bono um, uh, consultancy. So if you're building a system from scratch, this will allow you to, to do this. You know, a normal Im implementation is more than five for six days. It's better when you have a lot more time, so this can be done more efficiently, um, and you have two or three people working on your implementation. If you just want some help, then obviously we do, you know, booking out a power hour with one of our CRM coaching consultants. Or you can join our Salesforce charity admin course if you feel you don't know enough about the system that you're running and you need some help. Then we run these courses, they're running every couple of months and they cover the admin essentials and the non-profit service pack. Um, so that's all there at your uh, fingertips. We offer obviously offer support packages for all our customers. So we've heard from Joe, and Joe, thank you so much for for being our guest speaker today. It was quite enlightening to hear what you've done. Well done, such important work. Previously, we had Justice and Care uh, speaking, and on Monday we have the Trailblazers organization, which is about volunteering. So if you're, if you're in this webinar, you've probably received an email about the, fourth, the up and coming webinars. The next one is on Monday, three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's from Trailblazers, uh, which basically help convicts, I think, back into work, if I'm not mistaken, um, monitoring young offenders and they are going to be talking about volunteering. So again, we can use Salesforce for volunteering. Uh, I believe we have some more questions here. Um, would you recommend any, this person asked, this is Graham Dawson, uh, which Salesforce products besides Einstein were you using? Did you adapt Service Cloud for this program? I think that's one for you, Joe. Were you using the service? You were using cases, weren't you, which is in the service cloud? Um, yes, we were using um, Salesforce as a case management um, okay. to, to record yes. the, to manage the relationship with the, um, with the users. So mm -hmm. because this was, um, is a remote service that is delivered through the phone, Mm -hmm. means that the calls that the physical activity specialists mm -hmm. make, they, they get locked, for example, and yeah. these conversations that they have, so that when the physical activity specialist um, then talks to that person a month later or a week later, he can then visit the nodes and then encourage them motivationally, ask them what has happened things. So I think it's it's very much being around from the individual center approach um, mm -hmm. because that's the service delivery model of the project. Yeah. Having said yeah. that, I have worked in other organizations where we have had Salesforce, where we, you know, where I also um, was part of the leading and rolling up and building of the development of Salesforce and they use it for something else. So, for example, they use it for where they integrated finance and they will do the reconciliations of, of the risk, these reports to then mm -hmm. make sure that their finances and the disperse of the money was um, tallying. 
and okay. in all the different systems. So, so I think that's I think that's a great thing about Salesforce that you can use it for different um, areas. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. So yeah, I think in, pro in, in process, Service Cloud is like uh, cases, or sometimes in IT world, it's called tickets. So you can monitor, you can connect cases to your website. So if you're delivering a service like Joe in her organization, maybe you want a patient or a customer, whatever you want to call them, to interact with you, they can fill out a form that automatically creates a case because they're recognized by a unique identifier like their email address, and this will automatically then routes it to your appropriate department, um, and then the case gets sold, it goes through various stages of perhaps in progress, closed, resolved, whatever, so it's a great way of monitoring information from third parties. Um, it's already built into the Salesforce platform. You have web to case, so do go and uh, search that web to case. Um, so this is just a piece of code that goes on your website, but it automatically creates a case. If it recognizes the email address of the person as a contact or a lead in your uh, in your um, organization, it will it will uh, you know link the case automatically. It will put the case under that person. There are other packages I've just put in the type area. Um, there is another package where you can build dynamic forms called Form Assembly. And I would say probably 50% of our customers use this um, because what it can do, it can update a customer record. So web to case can't, it can only create a case, but say you want to send out something or you want to send out a survey, uh, other than Salesforce built-in survey, you want to send out a small questionnaire, uh, but you also want to capture more information about uh, the person or the stakeholder, you can add other fields and those fields automatically update Salesforce. The, remember there are discounts um, in the majority for non-profits, or if you are a community interest company, we are a community interest company, um, and we want to be because we want to work with charities. So kicks, as we're called, or registered charities, get the free do donation of licenses, which is 10 free licenses, which is worth about 12, 15,000 pounds. It's called P10, power of 10. Uh, that is given by Salesforce and then accordingly you can add more licenses and they range from £36 upwards per license per year. Um, so it really depends on your need uh, or what you need um, but really that sort of wraps up our web webinar today. Thank you very much for interacting for those that left questions uh, which is really wonderful. And I just hand back to Joe. Joe, thank you so much for such an enlightening story. It's amazing. I'll just leave you to say the last few words. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I just want to make a call to encourage organizations and services to, to make the business and strategic decision for your organizations and services to develop and adopt appropriate systems to manage your data and customer relationship like when when you have the systems and with this i mean both like software and processes that fit are fit for purpose you can rely on your data to understand and measure the effectiveness and efficiency of your organization and service so systems are key um enablers in helping your organization to achieve your vision. So do, do remember that. Um, and with, uh, with that, um, I'm gonna go um, my last line with, with, with a punch. And if, if, if you, punch in line. So if, and if you want to know a bit more about the worldwide, worldwide uh, trend and a bit more about the MS Society, I invite you to read my latest blog um, called The Age of visual measurement, digital mm -hmm. dashboards, which is on, economy, on the Economic Change website. Yes, excellent, I'll share that with everyone. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Joe, that, that was very enlightening. 
guys, impact is so important, measuring your having data intelligence. So you can measure your impact. I can't stress how important that is, whether it's for volunteering, granting, service delivery, so, so important. So if you need to speak to us about that, we can help you in any way. You certainly have our details. Please do get in touch. And if you can, join us on Monday for our Trailblazers uh, volunteering webinar. It would be great to see you in that. And again, thank you, Joe, very much for joining us. And enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much, guys. Take thank care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Joe. Thank you.